This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at stable diffusion from Stability AI. Stability AI recently released the stable diffusion and they have made it public. Okay. So what is stable diffusion? Stable diffusion is a state of art text to image model that generates images from text. And there is this uh, hugging face space of stable uh, diffusion where you can actually give some captions and see what kind of images have been generated. Let's look at some of the images which have been generated through this AI model. And then let's go into a little bit of what is the stable diffusion AI model about. Okay. So if you look over here, I have given a caption saying that a man boating in a lake surrounded by mountains during twilight hour. Okay. And these are the images which have been generated. I like this image a lot because yeah, this is what I kind of expected given the text. Uh, but again, if I go into detail slightly, you know, uh, this person, uh, basically a man on the boat is not that clear. Okay. But still this image is, uh, looks good. Okay. So, uh, I gave another caption over here where I said a tea garden with mist during early morning. And I am amazed by these pictures, right? These pictures have been generated by AI and uh, this is very close to the na natural scenery over here, right? Um, it could be just be a retrieved as well, but uh, you know, these images are very close to the natural scenery, what I expected from this caption, right? And this is very close to what I had in my mind in terms of a tea garden with mist during early morning, okay? Then uh, this is another text which I gave, which is about a rainy evening in Bengaluru. Um, so over here, this image stood out for me. This is quite uh, close to what uh, is naturally, you know, what you might see naturally in Bengaluru during rains. Uh, so this image is quite close. Uh, if I were to look at the other images, uh, you know, this image or the other images, it is not uh, properly generated as per expectations. If you see over here, the vehicles are not properly generated, right? But uh, the other, uh, this image was quite close to, you know, the natural image, what was expected for this caption, okay? Then I tried out some things like, uh, you know, a blue jay standing on a large basket of rainbow macarons. Uh, where did I get this caption from? I got this caption actually from uh, Google Imagine, which was another uh, text, uh, what you call text to image generation model. And here there was this caption. Uh, and uh, if I look at this image over here, right, uh, this image is quite good. Uh, you know, this image is quite good uh, compared to what is expected. But then here it goes for a toss. Here also it goes for a toss, right? But some images are really good over here. Another uh, caption which I had taken from, uh, you know, the Google image was a giant cobra snake on a farm. The snake is made of, of corn. Uh, there was a beautiful image uh, from Imagine uh, given this particular, uh, you know, text. But over here it kind of fails. Uh, it doesn't produce any image which is nowhere close to this uh, caption. Okay. Another caption which I gave was an apple shaped computer. I even over here it has not come up to the expectations. It is just some kind of an apple image which is being generated. Right. What I expected was um, some kind of, uh, you know, representation of a computer, Apple shaped computer with all these buttons and other things. Those things are missing over here. It has gen just generated an Apple over here. Okay. So this is about, uh, you know, my experiment with giving different captions and seeing what kind of images are being generated. Uh, in my short observation, what I found out is that, uh, you know, some things which are very close to the natural things are getting generated properly over here like the captions, which has uh, this thing, but uh, it struggles with some imaginary things like this over here in my short, you know, experiments, because if you go to the other people have tried out really imaginative stuff and they've got very good images, right? Uh, and the best part is that this entire source code, entire code is open source and hugging face has a collab, which you can actually run, right? And you can experiment with your captions by running this collab and you can check out what kind of images are being generated. For example, this is the most common image for this particular model, which I'm seeing from many uh, people is that a photograph of an astronaut riding a horse. And this is quite good, right? And uh, there are, um, you know, they've explained uh, how you can generate multiple images and things like that over here. I will not go into this notebook as such. 
you can try out this notebook but what interested me in this notebook is this part about explaining about what is stable diffusion right so the stable diffusion is based on a particular type of diffusion model called latent diffusion uh, it was proposed in a particular paper right what are diffusion models diffusion models are machine learning systems that are trained to denoise random gaussian noise step by step to get a sample of interest such as an image okay that is diffusion models diffusion models have shown to achieve state of art results for generating image data but one downside is that the reverse denoising process is slow in addition these models consume a lot of memory because they operate in the pixel space which becomes unreasonably expensive when generating high resolution images therefore it is challenging to train these models and also use them for inference so these are some difficulties with diffusion models right uh, because they consume a lot of memory and reverse denoising process is slow okay so there is a forward noising process and then there is a reverse denoising process okay so this is where latent diffusion comes in and latent diffusion can reduce the memory and compute complexity by applying the diffusion process over a lower dimension latent space not in the pixel space but in the latent space instead of using the actual pixel space this is the key difference between standard diffusion and latent diffusion models in latent diffusion the model is trained to generate latent representation of the images okay so there are three main components in latent diffusion one is an auto encoder a unit model and then a text encoder okay so what is the job of the auto encoder the uh, uh, variational auto encoder has two parts right encoder and decoder the encoder is used to convert the image into a low dimensional latent representation which will serve as the input to the unit model the decoder conversely transforms the latent representation back into an image so what is done is that during latent diffusion training the encoder is used to get the latent representations of the image for the forward diffusion process which applies more and more noise at each step okay during inference the denoise latents operated uh, generated by the reverse diffusion process are converted back into images using the decoder okay in inference you will only use the decoder okay so the first part is an image is passed to a vae uh, model and you get you know low dimensional latent representation these are then given to a unit okay the unit has encoder and decoder part both comprised of resnet blocks the encoder compresses an image representation into a lower resolution image representation decoder decodes lower image into higher original higher resolution okay more specifically the unit output predicts the noise residual which can be used to compute the denoised image representation okay to prevent the unit from losing information while downsampling shortcut connections are usually added between the downsampling resnets of the encoder to the upsampling resnets of the decoder the unit model has you know a resnet encoder and a resnet decoder which are connected okay and one does downsampling uh, one resnet does downsampling other resnet does upsampling okay so the stable diffusion unit is able to condition its output on text embeddings via cross attention layer the cross attention layers are added to both the encoder and decoder part of the net usually between resnet blocks okay the text encoder is responsible for transforming the input prompt okay into an embedding space that can be understood by the unit it is a simple transformer based encoder that maps a sequence of input tokens to a sequence of latent text embeddings okay uh, so stable diffusion does not train the text encoder during training simply uses the clips already trained text uh, encoder the clip text model okay so the text encoder so you have three parts right an auto encoder which generates image representations these latent representations are sent to an unit the unit is conditioned via cross attention layers on the text embedding right so the unit's output is based on the text embedding that is how this text is actually guiding the unit over here to get you know latent representation as an output and these latent representations are again decoded by the vae decoder to generate the final image okay that is the thing so why is latent uh, diffusion fast and efficient since unit of the latent diffusion models operates on a low dimension space it reduces memory and compute requ uh, requirement for example the auto encoder used in stable uh, diffusion has a reduction factor of 8 this means an image of 
3, 512, 512 becomes 3, 64, 64 in the latent space which requires 64 times less memory. That is why it is possible to generate 5, 512 into 512 image so quickly even on 16 GB collab GPUs. Okay. Now during inference what happens? Okay. So during inference this is the flow which is there. Right. So during inference you have an user output, user prompt basically which is astronaut riding a horse. It goes to a text encoder, gives a text embeddings. Okay. You have a latent seed from which your encoder generates the latent uh, images. Now this, because this text condition latent unit is there, what it does is that it will actually uh, take this as an input, the text embedding as an input and it generates, you know, your uh, uh, 64 by 64 conditioned latents, which is given to a variational auto encoder decoder to generate the final output image. So this step is done multiple times over here. Okay. That is the reverse diffusion process basically. Okay. This uh, uh, reconstruct which happens over here is your reverse diffusion process. Okay. So the stable diffusion model takes latent. That is what is explained over here. If I have missed out on something, let me see. Uh, I is used to computer denoised. Okay. Many different schedule algorithms can be used each. Okay. They talk about this. How is this denoise latent representation, uh, you know, generated via this scheduler algorithm, reconstruction scheduler algorithm. That is what is explained over here, right? So what they say is that the denoising process is repeated at least 50 times to step by step retrieve better latent image representation. Once complete, the latent image representation is decoded by the decoder part of the variational auto encoder. So basically this step, right? This step is actually repeat. This loop is repeated 50 times. Okay. To get a better latents and then from the better latents is given as an input to the variational auto encoder decoder to generate your final output image. Okay. So this is about uh, stable diffusion and this is integrated into hugging face hub. Um, uh, so basically there is a model license, which you need to uh, accept and then you can make use of these models and this uh, particular uh, collab notebook provides you uh, explains how it can be done. I wouldn't be going into the details of this. You can try it yourself. Okay. Uh, so this is an exciting development. Whereas previously Imagen or DALI were uh, closed source and we couldn't get uh, for uh, at least for DALI, you need to get access uh, to the model uh, to run and generate images. This anybody can try, uh, uh, you know, uh, hugging face as this uh, space as well where you can try you can try this Google collab as well to generate images and you can uh, you know learn more about uh, stable diffusion I hope this video about stable diffusion is useful for you if you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel see you in another video happy learning